I'm waiting on the light. It's just about time to begin our Sunday night worship service. I'd like to welcome everyone back. Especially if you're visiting with us, we'd like to extend a special welcome to you and invite you back any opportunity you may have. Song later tonight, Brother Jeff Gray, our first song is number 111, if you'd like to be turning there. I'll have the opening prayer, and Brother Malcolm Kirkendall will have the closing prayer. A few announcements, a uh, reminder of the Marietta Church of Christ Gospel Meeting will be July the 19th through the 21st. Uh, of course, the speaker is David Conley. I'd like to uh, remember that in our prayers this week. Also, our Gospel Meeting coming up next, beginning next Sunday, July the 25th. Uh, the speaker, David Light. Uh, we will have lunch following the morning worship, and then Sunday evening beginning at 7.30, and then Monday through Wednesday at 7.00. Uh, the feeding the preacher on Monday night will be uh, Jones group and Pat Moore's group. Uh, that will begin at 5:30, and then feeding the preacher on Tuesday will be Pat Deaton's group and Miss Deborah's group, beginning at 5:30. Under the special prayer request, need to continue to remember Larry Sarton, Tanya Martin, uh, Teresa Mills, which is Tanya's mother. Uh, Winoka Bostic is in Tupelo, uh, Judy McQuarrie, Ann Criddle, and also Ms. Joan Sparks is home from the hospital, so need to remember all of these uh, this week and during our prayer time. Sympathy needs to be extended to the family of Claudia Deaton, remember that family this week. Uh, additional announcements, uh, if you'd like to help prepare meals for Ms. Peggy Huffman during her recovery, uh, see Ann, and she'll get you lined up on that. And also, a uh, meeting will be at the Pine Grove Church of Christ beginning uh, July the 18th, going through the 21st. That's this week as well. And the speaker is Chris Perry. I believe that's all the announcements that we have. Uh, we'll begin our services with a prayer, if you'll bow with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity of prayer and to be able to approach your throne, dear Lord, and just thank you for listening to us and for caring about us. Lord, thank you for the opportunity that you give us to pray to you, to give you praise and thanksgiving for the God that you are. Lord, we're so thankful for this church, and we're thankful for the opportunity to be a part of this congregation here at Liberty. Lord, we're so thankful for the elders that serve here, for the deacons, dear Lord, for our ministers, Brother David and Jimmy, and Lord, so thankful for the teachers and each and every member, dear Lord, we just pray that we will strive to bring you glory and praise through being the church that you have established. Lord, so thankful for the opportunity to pray for those that are hurting and those that are sick, and we lift them up to you, those that were mentioned tonight, and Lord, we just pray that that you will be with them and, and comfort them, dear Lord, be with their families as they go through trying and hard times. Lord, we pray that we will seek opportunity to be encouraged, uh, encouraging to them and pray for them, dear Lord, as, as our duty as a Christian. Lord, so thankful for your holy word. We pray that we will be students of your, your word. We pray that we will study. We pray that we will add to our faith, dear Lord. We pray that we will... Uh, have understanding and wisdom as we study your word, that it may strengthen us, that we may better serve you. Lord, so thankful for Jesus and what he did on Calvary. We're thankful for the love that he has for us. Lord, to suffer a cruel death and to resurrect the third day, that we may have hope of salvation. But we just pray that each day that we'll be more humble and more forgiving, a little more loving. We just pray, dear Lord, that we will bring you glory and praise through our life. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Number 111. 111. My Jesus, I love. Oh. 
If I walk in the pathway of duty, if I work till the close of the day, I shall see the great King in His beauty. When I've gone the last mile of the way, when I've gone the last mile of the way, I will rest at the close of the smile of the way and if here I have earnestly striven and have tried all his will to obey twill and then saw the rapture of heaven when I've gone the last mile time marking your song books number 316 316 will be your invitation song after the lesson now if you have that mark please turn to 333 333 just convenient for you would you please stand Jesus the Savior came down from above, came to bring mercy and love. Crucified him, the mob scornful he cried, so he on Calvary died. While on the cross he prayed, Father forgive, for they know not what they do. For us he died that for him we might live. Can he depend on you? Can he depend on you? His blessed will to do. Will you be crowned with the faithful and true? Can he depend on you? He is preparing in heaven a home for all his faithful and on. Are you preparing to stay? 
than my side, or in that day be denied. Have you told others the story of love? Them what they should do. These are the precepts that come from above. Can he depend on you? Can he depend on you? His blessed will to do. Will you be crowned with the faithful and true? Can he depend on you? Good evening. It is great to see everybody out tonight to worship God. Had a great number this morning to worship God. A good number back tonight to, to tell God how much you love Him. And we have very good reason to love God. Before there was a world. Before there was a world. You know, we all have priorities in our life. What comes first? You know, whenever we think about, when we have a to-do list, maybe some of us keep that, and we number it 1 through 10, and we, we prioritize that. This is our first most important thing. We've got to get that done. Then we can go to number 2, number 3, and so forth. But we keep number 1 at number 1. Now, sometimes number 2 has to jump up there and take priority over number 1 because of a crisis or some circumstance. But we understand what priorities mean, what's important, what's number 1. What would we sacrifice everything else to make sure that number one is taken care of on our priority list? Well, what is God's priority when it comes to me, when it comes to you? Where does mankind fit on God's priority? Folks, we are way up there. We are at the tip top of that list according to the Bible. Because something is going on before there was a world, before there was creation. We're going to look at three things that were going on before there was any of these other three things that were going on that we're going to talk about. And it's encouraging. It's something that I need to be aware of. Because there's a lot of discouraging things going out there. We talked about that this morning, about some of the bad things that are on our, on, in the world that we have to watch out for. But if we can just... Im Embrace our understanding that God cares about David Conley. God's got us on the very top of his priority and to-do list. In fact, before there was a world and before there was a sinner, think about that. Before there was a sinner, before God created a, uh, the, the grass, before he created heaven and earth, before he created the sun, before he created human beings, which Adam and Eve eventually sinned. So before there was a sinner, there was a Savior. Before there was even a world, there was a Savior in God's mind. Before He even created mankind and, and mankind sinned, there was a Savior in God's mind. Everybody get your Bibles. Get your Bibles and turn to 1 Peter chapter 1. We think sometimes that God is a reactionary God. He will react when something happens, then He'll fix it by sending something else. Maybe He sent the, there was a sinner first. Maybe I should have put that on the top. And then, since there was a sinner, He had to figure out a Savior. Not the case. Before there was a sinner, there already was a Savior. 1 Peter chapter 1, let's begin at verse number 18. I'm reading from the King James Version. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed, that means you were saved, you were not saved with corruptible things, things like silver and gold. You weren't saved from these corruptible things, from your vain conversation. Vain means worthless. Conversation means way of life. So your worthless way of life, your sinfulness, you were not redeemed from your sinfulness by silver and gold, received by the tradition of your fathers. No, look at verse 19. Here's what you were redeemed by. But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb, 
without blemish, without spot. There's already a Savior planned for you, O sinners out there. And you were saved by this Savior, this precious blood of the Lamb, without blemish, without spot. But look at verse number 20. Who, verily, that means truly, who is the Christ there? So Christ, Jesus, truly was foreordained, planned by God beforehand. Listen, before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Now, when you became a sinner and sinfulness reigned in the world and death by sin, now you know about Jesus. He was manifest. He, manifest means made known. God made Jesus known. He made the blood of the Lamb known. You can take advantage of, of the blood of the Lamb. You can be baptized into Christ and contact the blood of the Lamb. Be washed in the blood of the Lamb. You can have all of that. Wonderful. It's made known to you. But let me tell you, it was in foreordained, it was pre-planned, it was already in the mind of God before the foundation of the world. Before there was a world, before there was even a sinner, there was a Savior. In Revelation chapter 13, verse number 8, he talks about this Lamb. You know, it's the Lamb of God, the blood of the Lamb is how we're saved. Revelation 13, verse 8 says this, And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship Him whose names were not written in the book of life, of the Lamb slain, listen, from the foundation of the world. When God created the world, He already had the Savior in mind. And He created Adam and Eve anyway. He knew they were going to sin. He knew there was going to be sinners. He knew there was going to be a need for salvation and for a Savior. He already had that plan. Folks, that tells me that I'm at the top of God's list when it comes to priorities. He made a Savior already for me before He even did anything else. He planned Jesus. And we know that He planned Jesus to take away our sins. That's what happened in John chapter 1, verse 29. After Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, and He was walking away. And what did he tell his two disciples? He said, look yonder. Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. This Lamb of God was foreordained according to Peter. This Lamb of God is, is the one that was prepared from the foundation of the world. So before there was a sinner, there was a Savior. And before there was guilt, and boy, we talked about this a couple of, uh, last week. Uh, about guilt and shame, and, and, and the, uh, sin brings guilt and shame, and, and fear, and, and all of these things that come with guilt. But before there was guilt, before man even experienced what guilt was, before you and I know what guilt was, there was grace. God already mapped it out, that He was going to provide grace to the guilty. We don't deserve it. We deserve our guilt. We are guilty. We deserve the consequences of our guilt. But God says, look, before there was even guilt, before I even uh, seen guilt on the planet, before I even made the world so that guilt could be present, there was grace. Listen to 2 Timothy chapter number 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 9. Who hath saved us? He saved us, called us with a holy calling. Not according to our works, because we're guilty. We're full of guilt. We, we fall short of the glory of God. Guilt is on us. So it's not according to our works, but it's according to His own purpose and grace. He had grace already in place. His purpose was foreordained in place. So His own purpose and grace. Listen to when it was provided for us. Which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Before the world even began, He already had grace in His mind. He already had grace, and of course that grace is only accessible through Jesus Christ, through the blood of the Lamb. But it's there. And it's available to all the guilty. We can't 
get rid of our sin. We can't get rid of our guilt by our own works, but we can through Jesus, through the grace through Jesus, which happened before the world began. I want everybody to get your Bibles and turn to Ephesians chapter 1. We're going to look about three or four verses there and see the same concept. Ephesians chapter 1, beginning at verse number 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus. See, it starts out praising God. Bless God. Man, this, this message tonight is about good news. How that God has already got this all planned out for us to have and take advantage of this wonderful blessing. And that is Jesus Christ, our Savior, and the grace of God. It was already there for us, made known to us now, but it's available to us. And he already planned it. And so, Paul told the Ephesians in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, Blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. I've got spiritual blessings in heavenly places available to us. Look at verse 4. According as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of of the world. Before the world began, he had already planned out that there was going to be a Savior to save the sinners. There was going to be grace to help the guilty. He says that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Now we do respond to that. We can't just everybody save. No, we've got to be holy and we've got to come to him. We've got to be washed in the blood. But look at verse 5 having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. He already had a will and he had a to-do list and at the top of that list was to provide a Savior for us. It was, a, it was the good pleasure of his will. It's what he wanted to do. It was his good pleasure. But look at the key verse in verse 6. To the praise of of the glory of His grace, wherein He hath made us accepted in the Beloved. The only way that we can have our guilt assuaged, our guilt forgiven, our guilt wiped away, is through the Beloved. And of course, that's Christ. And He provided that grace to assuage our guilt before the world began. That amazes me. It's not like that God said, whoops, David Conley, looks like you're a sinner. I better go figure out a way to save you. Oh, there's Jesus. I think I'll send him. No. Before there was a sinner, he already had a Savior ready for us. Before there was guilt, he already had grace in his mind, in his uh, plan for things. That is amazing to me. And finally, before there was a hell, Oh, yes, there is a hell. If anybody tells you, oh, there's no hell, God is too good for that, God is too wonderful to have a hell, he tells us about hell. He says the hell is real. But before there was a hell, there was a heaven. And God had already planned out for many sons to come to him in glory, according to Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10. But listen to Titus chapter 1, verse 2. In hope of eternal life. We've got hope for heaven. Hope for eternal life. Which God that cannot lie. God didn't lie. He can't lie. Well, what did He do? He promised before the world began. Before He even said, let there be light. He said, I got eternal life ready for some folks. Before he even said, let the water depart from the water so that the dry land appear. He said, I've already got eternal life planned and promised. It's ready. It's ready to go. Heaven is ready to go before the world began. That's amazing to me. He wants David Conley in heaven. It's at the top of his list. And he was planning it before the world began. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 1. Verse number 4. This is an amazing verse. Ephesians 1 verse 4. 
according as he hath chosen us in him. He's made a choice that there's going to be a group of people called his church, called the saved, called the ecclesia, the called out. This group of people, he said, I choose that this group of people is going to exist. I've got eternal life waiting on them. I've got heaven waiting on them. But he says, according to had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. I've already got this group of people in mind. And I want these people to come to eternal life before I even created anything. He goes on to say that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Folks, we've got to be holy and without blame, as we just read a moment ago. We, when we respond to that, this heaven, this eternal life, we can't just say, okay, God loves me so much, i got a ticket punch. No, we've got to be holy, we've got to be without blame. That don't mean sinless, but it means that we're to come and live the kind of life that He wants His group, His called out group, His children to live. And the first step is to get into the blood of the Lamb. Listen to Matthew chapter 25 verse 34. This is the scene, the judgment day, that Jesus said was going to take place one of these days. Now, before the world began, God got all these plans. But there's going to come an end to the world one day. And when the world ends, here's what's going to happen. Matthew 25, verse 34. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, These are the good folks. These are the guys who came and responded to the gospel message. Here's what he's going to say to them. Come, you blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. This is heaven. It's been prepared for you. How long has it been prepared for me? From the foundation of the world. Before I even created the world, I already had heaven prepared. And I've got it prepared for a prepared people. Somebody once said that. Heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. And if I'm prepared, if I'm in the church, if I am a part of that called out group, then God's already got me a place in heaven. But there is a hell. And, he's, and there was a heaven before there was a hell. But here's what he says in Matthew 25, the same text, a few verses later. Then shall he say also unto them on his left hand, now, the right hand, folks, is going to heaven. But those on his left hand, he's going to say this. Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire. And this is prepared for the devil and his angels. God did not intend for hell to be for me. He didn't intend for hell to be for you. Nobody that he created in his image was prepared for hell. He didn't prepare hell for them. He prepared hell for the devil and his angels. That's what he got heaven or hell prepared for. He doesn't expect or want or not willing that any should go to hell. But he says, if you are not prepared to meet God, then you will go to hell. Don't want you to. Didn't prepare hell for you. I've been preparing heaven for you since the foundation of the world. Before even the world began, I want you to go to heaven. But if you don't obey the gospel, it's as clear as it, it can be. You will go to hell. And he don't want us to go to hell. He's done everything that he could to keep us out of hell. He provided us a Savior. He's got so much grace in his mind and heart for us. And he's already got heaven prepared. Jesus told his disciples, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I, it's many mansions in heaven. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. I'll receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. That's what I want. That's what God is prepared for. But are we prepared to meet our God? God planned it from before the world began. And he also had this plan of salvation. Oh, it took him many years. Went through Adam and Eve. Went through all of the patriarchal times went through Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Then it went through Moses and he planned all of that, showing us the old law and how that was a shadow of the new law. And then finally he sent Jesus. He made Jesus known. 
Jesus had already been in mind before the world began, but he finally said, here's Jesus, and here's his New Testament, and you can be a New Testament Christian. How? Hearing the gospel, believing it, repenting of your sins, confessing that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, be baptized into Christ for the remission of your sins, rise to walk a new life, and live faithfully. Be thou faithful unto death. Be holy and blameless. That's been prepared in God's mind since before the world began. And I just want to get in on it. It's good news. Are you in on it? If you've never been baptized, tonight is the night. Get in on it. You say, well, I have, but I've wandered away. Folks, God don't want you to wander away. He wants you to stay in that group, that prepared group, because Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. But he'll be here, and we need to be ready. Why don't you come? Why together we stand and sing. Did you do appreciate your attention to the lesson tonight. It's a good news lesson. God's got us in his heart and his mind and he's got a place prepared for us and we're going someday and we're going to get to be with him for all of eternity. I'm looking forward to that day and I know you are too. That's why you're here tonight. If you haven't had an opportunity to take the Lord's Supper, communion with God through the body and the blood of Christ, then meet in this room to my left and your right and you'll be served. Be back with us on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock and we'll get into the Bible a little bit deeper. Sing 288 for a closing song. 288. <clears throat> Abide with me fast, pausing even tide. The Oh
Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the many blessings of life. Father, we're so thankful for this opportunity to come out and worship you. Father, we're grateful for the great lessons we've heard here today. May everything we've done have been pleased in thy sight. Father, we ask you to forgive us for sins. At the end of life's journey, Father, we ask you to give us a home in heaven. That's our prayer in Christ's name. Amen.